Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Building Drawing 101. In this episode, we will look at drawing elevations for a simple two bedroom house. Now this episode is a continuation from the previous episode. It's a continuation of the last episode where we were drawing this elevation. So in the last episode, we constructed the front elevation or the front view of this building here. This is the floor plan for the building. This is the roof plan for the building. All right, so we are now going to proceed to draw the one of the side elevation. For this exercise, I am going to, let me see which view I should draw. I'm going to draw the, the more difficult view. This is a bit more difficult than this view due to the fact that it has the, the opening here. So I'm going to take this floor plan, the one that I'm using to transfer the measurements, and I'm going to rotate it in an anti-clockwise manner, 90 degrees. Like if I type negative 90, or just rotate it until it is in line like this. You have to ensure that your, your object snap is on or your O tracking, your polar tracking rather. I'm going to now pull it across so that it's somewhere here. All right. The good thing about drawing a second view, you can transfer the measurements from the first view. So this is in line here. This is my ground line. This is my floor level line. And I've explained these measurements. I've stated these measurements from the previous video. All right. <coughs> My apologies for that. All right. So these are the levels. Ground to floor, 300. Floor to lintel, 2,000. Floor again to wall height or beam height, 3 thousand and these measurements they may vary but i'm just using the most common measurements and again the end of the building end of the plan that i'm transferring the measurements from should be projected i'm going to put these in construction layers all right so let me start off with the roof Here's the thing. Let me copy this as well. I'll show you something else that can be done. This could have been done from the first instance when you were drawing it. The first, the front elevation. I'm going to rotate this so that the this side can project the measurements. The building is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter. But in the future, when you're drawing buildings that are not symmetrical, it matters. So this is what I'm going to do. I am going to project a line from this edge. I was trying to use this edge, but I realized that nothing is there. It is, has to be from the wall. Notice I'm clicking the wall, not the, not the roof. I'm going to project a line downwards about here. And I'm going to select the entire thing along with the line. And I'm going to move the line until it is in line with, with the edge. I can now delete this. And I can now move this closer as well as this. We're going to do some transferring of measurements now. Alright, so this was the overhang, 450. I'm ignoring the gutter that was there. So this is, let me do that again. This would have this would be the overhang. This would be the overhang right here as well. All right. And then the, the fascia board would be the same height. I'm transferring this measurement across. I'm transferring this across as well. From here, which is the overhang, to here. I can now delete these lines. I could have just measured that as well. 
there are different ways i could have just measured the 450 from here but i like to transfer measurements once you do that you have your fascia board you can now proceed to delete this line or trim this line and delete these lines all right i'm going to convert these <coughs> Alright, so this is the fascia board for the new for the roof. And I am going to now draw the slope. But this is what you can do. In order to know where the slope will stop, find the center of the where all the members meet here. We are going to pull it down. We're going to do the same thing for this part as well. So when you draw the slope from here, it will stop here. And if you notice, it will be directly in line. So you could have also transferred the measurements from here. And you would know that that slope would be here. And you bring this across. And this is the point where it should go down. And if you notice, it's perfectly in line with here. So this is the roof. Right. So, we can now go ahead and insert the windows and the openings. I like to get the layout first, then insert the windows and the openings. Alright, so there, there's a window here for the kitchen. And I'm going to just copy this one line across so that I am able to transfer the measurements for the windows. And for this opening, this opening goes all the way to the ground level. Alright, so I can draw this line. The opening starts here and stops here. You, you determine the opening, how far it should go. But normally I like to start it at the lintel height. So there will be a window here. This is 1800. And the depth of the window is always, well, not always, is most often 4 feet. Or 1200 millimeters I can simply copy this window here given that it's the same size this window here is like it's, it's in the kitchen normally the windows in the kitchen they have a depth that is less than 1200 so in this case it's 900 reason being the counter in the kitchen is at a certain height so the window cannot be too low or it will interfere with the counter can now delete these lines and you have your three windows um let me hatch this space ahead of time sometimes the hatch may take a while to be generated so sometimes it's best to set the scale before because due to the fact that they sometimes the space is hard for autocad to analyze and as such it may take a little while for this hatch to come up all right so there it is so i'm going to click this into this space hopefully it doesn't take that long all right good what i normally like to do is hatch this space first instead of trying to search for the actual hatch that i need and since it's already here i'm going to just match the properties i could have just searched here but i wanted to do it that way it's quicker for me all right so this is how this roof would shape and if you notice this is the shape that you get and for the front view so you can use the roof to determine which shape you see all these parts that are showing are sloping in this direction so the other three directions of slope you will not see on the elevation like for example you're drawing this right view only the slopes to the right you will be seeing. You join the front view, only the slopes to the front you will be seeing. So any part of the route that is slo sloping to the front, that's what you will be seeing. So um, let me take this window. I'm going to delete this window and use these windows. Let me use this window. And this window was drawn 
it was 1,200 millimeters. So I'm going to move it 300 and modify this window. You can draw it from scratch if you wish. 300 again. I'm just doing the easier way. And I'm going to extend these, extend these, extend these, extend these, extend these, extend these. And this is what you can do. This line is a certain measurement, 775. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to offset 775 divided by 3 because I want three divisions here. So this line or this line doesn't matter. And there you go. So I'm going to delete this one. And I have a window that is 1,800. So I'm going to select the entire window except for the outside boundary because I already have the outside boundary up there. And I'm going to copy it at the outside boundary. And then paste it on the outside boundary here and here. For this window, I may definitely need to just redraw. I may I can modify this window to meet that requirement, but let's just redraw. So it's 50. And then 50 again. Then from here, 25 on each side. This can be done rather quickly. Oh, there's something. Oh, yes, it's there. All right, so this will be, this will be, this will be, I'm going to draw a line here. I'm going to extend this downwards to show that one of them is out on the outside. And this is the window I'm going to find the length of this side and since I want four divisions I'm going to offset and type 700 divided by divided by four and that can for the other side and this window is 900 millimeters by 900 millimeters so we have this space to go I can move this out of the way. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to write right elevation. Sometimes they write it like north, east, west, and south elevation. Or elevation A, elevation B, elevation C, elevation D. And they would use arrows to point on the floor plan to label the elevations or the views that will be given elevations. Alright, so let's go with this. This is supposed to be 100 millimeters lower because it's, if you realize the porch from this side is 100 millimeters lower. Alright, and there is a. You can trim out this part because an art and a column is supposed to be there. Um, so I'm going to find the center of the column. I'm going to bring it down and the beauty about AutoCAD is I can just highlight this column here then copy and bring it across then paste and I'm just going to bring this down so the column is bulging a bit so the rest of the building is still in line okay I can now delete this line that is transferring the measurement and I'm going to do the same thing to draw the art so I'm going up 300 millimeters I'm going across and I'm going back down here so remember you have to draw the rectangle that this curve will be in clicking the art command then I'm clicking the starting point the midpoint and the end point after which I'll delete and you have it 
if you look here you will realize that there's no door here there's nothing here this is just a blank surface so, so when you look through this opening there's nothing here to see and you have the blank wall so this elevation is basically finished i'm just going to highlight these and i'm going to copy them across that's the beauty when you have one view already drawn you just copy the parameters to the other view are the labelings to the other view all right so i'm going to rain these yet rain these in a bit i don't need them to be this far out and since the in this scenario the measurements remain this should have been down here i'm going to just copy this across to here and there you have it all right in some cases you would have what we call baluster rails here you can go ahead and place those or you can just put a regular rail uh let's see here in a in some drawings that i was working on i, I think i had some rails here so i'm talking about these you can put these all of these added features that you're seeing a lot of them have been downloaded and inserted in my drawing all right so you can insert the rails if you wish so it all depends on how the person is trying to design the building all right so that is basically it i hope you grasped the concept that was taught i hope you were following and everything was clear to you please remember to like the video share the video and subscribe if you have not yet done so and share the knowledge have a good day